guys, this is Louisa Brixen. Welcome to the interview. Hello my lovies and welcome back to my channel as your girl Chamaka Kori and today with me on my channel I have a special guest. Introduce yourself. My name is Louisa Briggs and I go by my first name actually Enifa but a lot of people call me that and um, I'm a graduate uh, from the University of Regina, Petroleum Systems Engineering. <laughs> she not only runs Lulu's Kitchen, yeah. she also is one of the leaders of a ministry called Tay Healer. Since they started doing their concerts, I've actually always gone and it's always something to write home about. And it's always something you don't want to miss. That's so, thank you. we're gonna, you're welcome. We're gonna start off with Lulu's Kitchen. Okay. So the first question we have for you today is, what encouraged you to start Lulu's Kitchen? I started Lulu's Kitchen last year, March, no, February 20th. 2018 mm -hmm. yeah and um, before that I feel like it was came from a place of passion I love cooking that's mm. it. like I just love I enjoy cooking like it's it's like a hobby for me Ooh, right I know some people find it stressful but for me it's just easy like it's just something that makes me happy and I'm just gonna say the truth of the like the whole truth of this I lost my job okay right I lost my job and I was jobless for like like some months. I think I was jumping for about six months or so. Mm -hmm. So during that period, I was kind of like, you know, just thinking of what to do and, you know, start thinking of how to like, you know, just at least have a little cash, you know, mm -hmm. the money wasn't coming in. And of course, you know, in this country, you need to, if you don't work, you will not eat, you know, yeah, that, right? true, true. So I was getting to that, I was getting to that zone of not even having anything to eat. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, funny how a lot of people don't even know about that. Yeah. You know, I come out with a smiling face and people don't understand how broke I am, <laughs> you know? So yeah. that was, yeah, that was like, that was like one of the things that kind of triggered me to think. And I'm like, okay, what can I do to at least pay my bills? Like it was really bad to the point. I didn't have money to, by Burger King meal. Whoa. Yeah. When I realized that, mm -hmm. I was like, I want to eat this, but I can't afford it anymore. Like, what's like, what's wrong? That was when I realized my case was bad. Yeah. And then I just chatted with a friend from a friend from back home in Nigeria, and he was like, "But you cook now. You know how to cook. So what are you doing? Have you ever have you thought about?" It? I said, "Yeah. Like, you know how you have plants. You know mm -hmm. how you have ideas and all of that. But to start." Mm -hmm. is the main work. I just believe that God sent him, that friend, and he mm -hmm. just yeah, he just came around, like we just started talking and then this whole thing came up and you know, he just brought it up and said, you should look into that. And I said, but how do I start? It was more like he had a formula. Oh, wow. Do you get He had a formula that he was just gonna give to me and say, okay, Louisa, take this. I was kind of troubled, I was thinking, can I do this? Like I started doubting myself and yeah. I started asking myself different questions like, do people like it? Do people even like me in Regina? Do people mm -hmm. even like Louisa as a person, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Because you need to like maybe be friends with somebody or like the person for you to patronize. And I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go for it but before i knew what was happening he said oh yeah i'm gonna design a poster for you i was like okay this is getting real i had that poster in my phone for like two weeks i was like can i do this can i do this yeah. but i now prayed i just told god i'm putting this into your hands right mm -hmm. if it's gonna be successful help me get through it and even if it's not gonna be successful i want i still want to try you have to just give yourself that that, that push so i pushed myself and the night before i unveiled Lulu's kitchen i could not sleep that night i was like on my bed rolling hey. when i was trying to post it on instagram i was holding my phone my hands were like shaking and then i put it out there i didn't even say a word mm -hmm. And then people saw it mm -hmm. and started liking and commenting, mm -hmm. you know, started sharing the posters all yeah. over, like WhatsApp, you know, texting me, Louisa, oh, congrats, this, that, that. So that was when I realized that, okay, maybe I really needed to do this. Yeah. And that was how it just came up. And Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. At what age did you start cooking? I had like elder sisters, mm -hmm. so I didn't really have the chance or the opportunity to be like cooking in the house and all those things. But I was always in the kitchen. Okay. Right, so I was always watching like my mom do and my sister. My sister is a very good cook. My mom is a very good cook. I wasn't cooking, but I was 
you know that one person that they're always standing around, go and bring pepper, go and bring oh, Maggie, yeah. go and bring this. So I was watching. Mm -hmm. The only thing I was allowed to cook, maybe just go and boil rice. Okay. White rice and just put yeah. salt aside, or go and put beans on fire, mm -hmm. or go and heat water for guy. Yeah. Like all those little, little things. Mm -hmm. I feel like the first day I cooked stew in the house, my mother called me and she said, so because I asked you to cook stew, you use all the tomatoes in this world. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it because it was funny. I, to, you know, funny. I, I felt fulfilled. That, oh, I, cook, I, cook I cooked of stew. stew. Whether it was good or not, it was not my problem. All I know is that I cooked stew. Yeah. So, but when I came to Canada, I came to Canada um, in 2010. Mm -hmm. and how old was I then? I think I was 19. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was 19. That was actually when I started learning how to cook. Like, mm -hmm. call my mom on the phone and ask her questions and all that. Started cooking and yeah, you know, you cook, it's sweet, you eat, it's not sweet, it's cheese. You know, you know. <laughs> so I was still at the age of 19. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which of the delicacies do you like cooking? Like, which one do you like prefer making the most? That's that's actually gonna be very hard to pick. Mm -hmm. I like to cook soup, mm -hmm. like any kind of soup, right? And I can list like 10 different kind of soups that I can make. Like 10. I can't make two. I try to cook food that people don't normally cook oh. at home. So I try to like go into the local soups, like the local ones that people don't even find the ingredients here. Yeah. So I, I feel like soup is like the best, like my favorite thing to make. Okay. Yeah. Any soup. Any soup. Yeah, down. Yeah. Okay. You guys are here, you know. Soup, you know, you all of it that cannot cook soup. <laughs> Lulu is there. Oh, so, how often do you try new recipes? Right now, I'm doing the business like part time because I still work, mm -hmm. right? So, when I'm when I'm not putting up menus, I just try something. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, I want to make um, I want to cook a goose soup, and I like to try with all the simple, simple ones. Like a mm -hmm. goose soup, I can just decide to combine two different kind of leaves and see what taste it will bring. Mm -hmm. Not the regular spinach or the regular bitter leaf. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I want to put uziza and okazi, mix mm -hmm. it together, and see just a blend of that. And so I'll say maybe like once or twice in a week, I try something new. Mm, that's good. Yeah, that's actually good. So you were saying how like you didn't cook till like you were like 19, mm -hmm. and like what you did was basically like observe. Mm -hmm. Among all the people that you observed, who taught you to like? Who did you learn from the most? My mom. Your I don't mom. think I learned anything from the internet. <laughs> all of us YouTube users. <laughs> no, I don't think I. I I watch all mm -hmm. those videos like yeah. Instagram. I watch them. Yeah. Maybe I kind of like look at the ingredients they use mm -hmm. and see what they're combining. But in terms of learning how to cook, I learned that from mom. Yeah. Oh, this is OG, man. How has the feedback been since you started? I haven't really received any negative feedback when it comes to my food, and that's not bragging. It's just the fact. Yeah. I'm, I'm not bragging that mm -hmm. I'm the greatest cook, but I know I'm a good cook. Like I don't, I can't, I can't deny Which that. Food? <laughs> you know? food, yeah, it's actually good. Yeah, I, I can't deny that. So it's been like it's been positive and. Couple with the fact that I'm still working, which kind of like slows my business mm -hmm. to an extent. But whenever I come out and I put up a menu, people order, you know, people mm -hmm. order. And sometimes people just give me shout outs on like um, Instagram and Snapchat. Sometimes I don't even say, like, somebody like J. Kills. J. Kills is always like posting Lulu's Kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I don't, yeah. And whenever I say that, I'll be like, oh, thank you so thank much. Thank you so you know? much, yeah. And like I don't I don't pay people to do that, they just do it. I feel like that's just a result as a result of good food and just being nice to Louisa. So see people love you and you know your greatest here. You are not seen. A lot of people love Louisa. We're gonna break the ice now, okay? We're okay. gonna do a challenge. You have money for this week. I did, but I didn't really post it. So what did you have? Because I want to make sure that you cannot go outside the menu. And the menu I had this week, fried rice and vegetable soup. Okay. okay. So you're going to pick between those two. Mm -hmm. And in one minute, tell us how to cook it. You're going to tell oh us. Oh my God. Give us I a step, step procedure on how to cook either of them. How many minutes do I have? One. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do fried rice. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> one, two, ready, go. Okay, the very first step for fried rice is um, I prepare all my veggies, I cut them, I um, then I parboil my rice. I don't parboil it like I put just like me, not not even halfway done, no, just still strong and crunchy. And then I steam my chicken, and I make sure that my chicken stock is sweet because that's like that's fried rice for me. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I bring out the chicken from the stock, I turn the stock into the rice and low heat, and then put butter, and um, yeah, just butter, and then on low heat and just 
cook it and then I fry my veggies. Thirty seconds. As we as I fry my veggies and um, I feel like fried the veg veggies with butter, shrimp, and then I put um, spring onions, white onions, and put um, my bell peppers, and then the last thing I put is the mixed veggies because it's already cooked, right? So I just like yeah, put it in there, mm -hmm. and then once it's fried, not too much water, just be careful, and then I mix them Ten, up together, and nine. that's fried rice. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. Now, another thing that you also do, other than Ludus Kitchen, as you mentioned earlier, is that you also head um, Tehila yeah. Ministrals. What inspired you to start up Tehila Ministrals? My love for God. Mm. Does your group have like a mentor? Like uh, somebody that as a spiritual leader? Oh, yeah, we do, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pastor Gabriel Araba and his wife, Pastor Tenny Araba. Okay. What's the farthest place Tehila Ministrals has ever ministered in? Saskatoon. How easy or hard is it managing the group? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they will kill me if they watch this video, but I'm just gonna be playing, yeah, because you guys. <laughs> Anyways, when the Hila started, we have we're, we're plenty, mm -hmm. like plenty, I can and this whole thing has taught me patience. It has given me like the ability to be able to tolerate people, and I'm not perfect, right? I'm mm -hmm. not a perfect leader, but at the same time. It was a learning process for me to be mm -hmm. able to manage people. So I won't say it's easy because these are people with different personalities, mm -hmm. you know, different things that they're doing with life. Like some people are in school, some people are working, mm -hmm. you know, different schedules and all of that. So it's not been easy. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they, we all behave, but sometimes it's in. It's to enter here sometimes, you know. <laughs> By the end of the day, like, I call them family, mm -hmm. right? And we can fight we can quarrel we can no not quarrel not like malice kind of yeah. thing we can have arguments disagreements and all of that but at the end of the day it's not something that we take away and just live with it no mm -hmm. whatever the issue is we address it yeah. i'm a very outspoken person like i'm like if you ask i if it's wrong i tell you mm -hmm. straight up yeah right if i need you to do something or if i need you to um if i'm trying to correct you mm -hmm. and most of the time when i correct my own like my own kind of correction is out of love Mm -hmm. It might come off as harsh, but at the same time, I'm trying to make you better mm -hmm. in your singing and all of that. I just like the bond that we have, and we know how to have fun too. If it's mm -hmm. normal, you know, <laughs> hang out and eat, and you know, just enjoy ourselves. It's a two-way thing. Like, it's there's there's a balance, right? Mm -hmm. So even in as much as we have the downs, we also have the ups too. Mm -hmm. So it's just a very wonderful mix, and I'm just grateful for life. And it's been Tahila is gonna be eight years in May. That's great right there. And we can all see now that God is taking us to a different level mm -hmm. in terms of like spirituality, like maturity. Everybody's growing. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's growing. Like like we're at that point that we even want to do more. Mm -hmm. Like more in the city, more in the community and just try to like get the community involved and let them know what we're doing and just pretty much just let people know about Christ. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's how we share. Oh, we don't know how to preach Bible, so we sing yeah. and bless lives. You know, so, yeah. you know, like us that cannot sing, we gotta talk. <laughs> Can you give me like specific highs and lows that you guys have had as a group? I'll start with the lows when maybe someone has to leave, mm -hmm. you know, leave the group, and that's when you realize that we're like a body, like a human body, and it's like one part of you is going away. So it kind of like hurts. Those are moments that we have, and then when we have disagreements too, that um, we can really manage, mm -hmm. and people's feelings are hurt. And for me personally, I know I've hurt them so much. Like being, mm -hmm. oh my god, I'm not the best leader. Like yeah. I said, I'm still learning and I'm still growing, and I know I'm getting better in terms of like managing and doing all of that. So we kind of like experienced something last year that kind of like shook the group a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, to the point that we thought we're gonna we're not gonna be together anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It hurt everybody so bad. Yeah. Like we had a meeting to like address the issue that we kind of like had in the group, and we didn't get a solution that night. And that was the first time that thing was ever happening. Because normally, when we when we want to fight, we fight and fight and fight, and then we, we reconcile right I did, there, yeah. no going home. Mm -hmm. But that particular night, there was no solution, oh. and everybody left mm. down. I came back home and I sat down on my couch and I was like. God, I don't know what to do anymore, you know. I was yeah. at that point that I actually cried that night because I felt like I could no longer manage oh. anymore, she gets. But thank God for spiritual parents, yeah. you know, call them and just told them what was going on and mm -hmm. give them all the information and, you know. And they just said something like, 
well, whatever God establishes stands. It does not matter the wind, it does not matter the storm, it does not matter the challenges. Mm -hmm. As long as God is in it, it will stand. Yeah. It might just be a little shaky shaky, but just give it time. It and you know the funny part? Now this name comes to the ups now. And after that week, we all felt some type of way. Everybody was sad. People still had like things that they wanted to like clear out, but they didn't have an opportunity to. Mm -hmm. But when we saw ourselves the next week, we didn't even remember what happened the previous week. That was not about our doing. That was yeah, just God and the Spirit helping us, like yeah. to just ease all the pain mm -hmm. and all the hurt in everybody's hearts and just you know. How far do you intend to take to your ministry? Oh, like, as far as you can see, just like it was written in the Bible. Look to the north, the south, the east, and the west. As far as your eyes can see, mm -hmm. that's what I'm willing to give. No limits. Mm -hmm. We're going all the way. So now our final question for the night. How are you able to manage your life, like your job, to healer, as well as to do this kitchen, like the balance? It's just one head you have, oh. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I really don't know. I won't tell you like I have a, a schedule. Like, but at the same time, like I said, if you ever want to do anything in life, as long as you have the passion to do it, as long as you have that staring in your spirit to do mm -hmm. something, you will create time for it. It's not easy mm -hmm. because I know sometimes I come out, I just want to just lie down and sleep. But I have to cook, I have to keep Lulu's kitchen going. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I have to put my eyes in Tehila. But I don't do that by myself. And I don't take credit for the fact that Tehila is still standing today. The members, they are phenomenal. Like when, I, when it comes to like dedication, like I don't even take that away from them. They show up and to the point that sometimes they'll be like, you know what, Lulu said chill, I will handle this, I will handle that. So it's not it's not easy, I will say. It's not easy, but somehow I feel it's just the grace of God. Yeah, yeah. that's all I can say. Cause sometimes I, many people tell me, how do you manage? I be like, I don't even feel like I'm stressed up like mm -hmm. that. You know, bad as a bad. You come home, you drink talanol, like and you sleep. <laughs> Actually, seeing you strive to put your business out there, seeing you strive to make sure Taylor still stands, and even seeing the members of Taylor make sure that it still stands, yeah. like it's just something to write home about, and it's something that I just want to applaud you guys every time I Thank see you guys because it's, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful. It's a beautiful sight. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Time. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. Remember, stay glued, don't stress, stay tuned for more updates. I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.